In the previous video, I talked about the idea of basis expansion, and I said that when the data is not linearly separable in the original feature space, what we can do is to expand the feature space to map the original feature space into another feature space, and then we can apply the support vector machine we learned, either the hard version or the soft version. But the main issue with that was this, was this dot product here in the transformed feature space, the dual Lagrangian we want to optimize depends upon the dot product and also the classification depends upon the dot product and this dot product takes a lot of computations, takes a lot of time because the number of operations is very high so we compared the number of operations required for that. So we took the case where in the original feature space we have one dimensions and when using quadratic features this is the number of operations required, five, almost 5,000 multiplications and 5,000 additions. <coughs> and in the original feature space this took only 100 multiplications and almost 100 additions. So this is a large number of operations and this causes problems. And now to avoid that problem we define something that is called a kernel and this is what the kernel trick is about. So we define a function k such that it is equal to phi of x i dotted with phi of x j. And the idea is that we will try to find out the expression of this dot product and simplify it. And when we simplify this expression, this means that the number of operations would decrease. So to give you a concrete example, I will talk about the case of uh, quadratic polynomial expansion. That is, we have quadratic features, so the original feature space has two features, x1 and x2. This means that the quadratic polynomial expansion would have five features, which are x1, x2, x1 squared, x2 squared, x1, multiplied with x2. So this is quadratic polynomial expansion. But now the problem is to be able to simplify this expression into a simpler form, what we need to do is to tweak a little bit this new feature space. So I would modify it slightly, so I would say my feature space or my transformed feature space would contain a new dimension that is just equal to 1. This is just a shift and I would perform a linear transformation on this feature and this feature and this feature by multiplying them by square root of 2. And this is not a problem, in fact, because if the data is linearly separable in that feature space with a linear hyperplane, then after shifting this feature space and then transforming it in a linear way, the data would, would still be linearly separable or separable with a, a linear hyperplane. So this is not a problem. Now, what I want to do is to define a kernel function that is equal to this dot product xi phi of xi dotted with phi of xj and if I perform this dot product and do the simplifications work out all the math this is what I get at the end I get 1 plus x1 multiplied with x1 this is for i and this is for j plus x2 multiplied with x2, this is for i, this is for j, and everything is right to the power of 2. And this means that the kernel function associated with this 
transformation of the feature space is equal to 1 plus xi dotted with xj raised to the power of 2. Okay, so now I can replace this expression and this expression with this expression here. Now, why this is useful? The reason why this is useful is that I can train my model without performing any transformation. So when I replace this with this, you can notice that I'm working just with the features in the original feature space, so there is no transformation in the new feature space. Okay? And in English, the advantage of that is that the number of computations or the number of operations is decreased. Now to examine that, let's consider the following example. Let's consider again that in the original feature space the number of dimensions is 100. Okay? So this means again that in the mapped feature space the number of dimensions is almost 5150. Now what I want to do is to compare the number of operations required by this dot product. So this, as I said, would take, without the kernel function, without this kernel function, this would take 5150 multiplications plus 5149 additions. Okay? But if I replace this with this kernel function, so this is with no kernel function without kernel. Now with the kernel, the number of operations is here, the dot product would be equal to, no, the, this would take 100 operations, 100 multiplications in 100 additions. This would take 100 multiplications and uh, exactly 99 additions plus this addition here so we have 100 additions and then I have everything should be raised to the power of 2 this is this means that I have two additional multiplications so overall this is equivalent to 102 multiplications plus 100 additions so I can perform the same operation with a fewer number of operations. So notice the difference in the number of operations that I have, and this is exactly the same thing. So you can see that the number of operations here is almost 5,000 multiplications, and here I have only 100, almost 100 multiplications. Similarly for the number of additions, so there is a huge gain in the uh, number of operations, and the advantage of that is, as I said, I would be able to perform the training of my algorithm faster, or of my model faster, and at the same time, I would be able to do the classification faster as if I am working in the transformed feature space. Now let's take a look at the kernel that we have used. So the kernel that we have used so far is this kernel. So this is equal to 1 plus xi dotted with xj raised to the power of 2. So this is called a quadratic polynomial kernel. In the more general form of that kernel, is a polynomial kernel. So this is a polynomial kernel in fact and this is equal to R. What is R? R is just the shift that we used to shift the our feature space. So here we have used a shift of 1 therefore we have here 1 but in fact you can use any shift you want and then plus the dot product of xi and xj raised to the power of p. So p is just the order of the 
polynomial. And in our case, we used a quadratic features or quadratic polynomial, therefore, the order was two. So this is called a polynomial kernel, and there are many other kernels that you can uh, use according to the uh, type of separation you want to get on your training samples.